Welcome back to Let's Have It Out. I'm Bandil Hadebe from the ANC Professionals League, and my guest on the show tonight is Jordan Hill-Lewis, and he's the DA spokesperson on jobs. Jonathan, let's continue with our conversation. So, yes. So, um, sorry, Jonathan, let's continue with our conversation. Jordan, Jordan, sorry, I keep getting your name wrong. I apologize. Um, Jordan, let's let's continue with our conversation. Um, one of the things that um, your manifesto has raised, and this is a conversation that obviously started just before you launched your manifesto, was the question around scrapping BE. Why are you looking to scrap BE? That's a good question. The, the reasoning is simple. BE started out with a noble intention of diversifying ownership in our economy. But over the years, it has been captured by a well-connected political elite that has used it basically to implement a program of massive, wide-scale corruption in the economy. And so BE has been completely perverted. And this is a, an, a position held by the vast majority of South Africans that are tired of BE because it does not deliver on its uh, original mandate. All it delivers on is to re-enrich a tiny elite of well-connected ANC billionaires and multi-multi-millionaires and their children and their families at the expense of ordinary black South Africans. So for that reason, we came to the decision that we cannot any longer support BE as it is implemented by the ANC. That does not mean that we have abandoned support for black advancement. That, those are two different things. We reject the ANC's model of BEE and we replace it with our own better working model. Take us, take us through to what your model looks like. Well, the problem is that the, the current model has served to only concentrate opportunities in the hands of the few. And that's what we mean when we say we, we want one South Africa that is truly for all the people. So that opportunities are not reserved for only those who are well connected, right. but they're available to all. So we need to rewrite BE policy to make sure that it okay. actually Jordan. incentivizes businesses to bring in new entrants, small businesses Jordan, and people who line. have not already been empowered. Sorry, John. Sorry Jordan, I've got a call on the line. Um, Jonathan from Johannesburg, good evening. Jonathan? Yeah, good evening. It seems I'm like trying to understand just particularly, how does the DA have any understanding of what black South Africa understands to get land in this country when the reality is the majority of the country has no land whatsoever? And you guys are holding the land with literally no way forward for the majority of the country. How are you going to put a new way forward for the DA to simply put a way forward? What, what was the strategy? Jonathan? Thank you for your call, Jonathan. Jordan? What is your strategy? Well, the there are millions of black South Africans who live on land or in homes that are owned by the government. And the question we need to ask is why does the government not want those South Africans to own the land that they live on or to own the houses that they live in? That is the central question. Now we are saying our approach to land reform is to give those people proper ownership, to give them full title, to give them the dignity of actually being a homeowner and a, sh a stakeholder in our economy. And it is the government that prevents them from doing that by refusing to give title to state-owned land. So we can achieve land reform without the scapegoat of land expropriation. It is un unnecessary and it is destructive. Jordan, Jordan, so there's a lie that the DA has perpetuated for, for too long. The lie around private ownership of land. The ANC government is not opposed to private ownership of land. The ANC government has also not suggested any process of nationalization of land. The ANC government is focused 
on pursuing a strategy where the land that is currently in the majority of white people is shared equally. I don't know where you guys get this idea that the ANC government wants to perpetuate where people are, are owned by the states. We are not pursuing a national nationalization of land policy as the African National Congress, but what we are pursuing, and this is the part that you continuously distort as the DA, and you've campaigned on an erroneous view about the ANC, about the government, with no basis. If you take, for instance, Gauteng, where Premier David Makura has already started rolling out a process to allocate land, state-owned land, to, to the people. Now, now, you don't speak about that. You perpetuate this, this lie that we want to have people renting the land um, from the states, that the ANC want to own the land. The ANC has never said anything about nationalization of land. The DA came up with that concept and said the ANC is saying that. Let's take another call out from Cape Town. Nanglaiba, good evening. Um, good evening, Bandila, and good evening to your guest. Um, I'd just like to rebut something that he said earlier on, um, where he claimed that in, in, the, in, the, in the public hearings for the uh, constitutional amendment, uh, that close to a million South Africans were opposed to the expropriation of land without compensation. And in fact, it's been proven, and he would know that because he's an MP, um, it's actually been proven that the submissions that were made were actually a free forum clogging up the system with repeated submissions of the same people having uh, systems-generated submissions where, in, in fact, they use the fact that they've got technology to create a facade to say that millions of South Africans don't want the um, expropriation of land without compensation. But when in actual fact, people do want it. It's, it's a minute group of people who use technology and who use the fact that they've got access to resources to have to generate a, an email wherein they would send hundreds and thousands of the same email from the same people to clog up the system in order for them to halt or to delay the process of the, of the expropriation without land without compensation. So it's absolutely not true that there are millions of South Africans who do not want uh, their land to be returned to um, to its original uh, rightful owners. That's all I wanted to read, but thank you, Bandil. Thank you so much, Nangleva. Jordan, Nangleva says you are distorting the stat by a study that you conducted that was deliberately created to confuse South Africa. How do you answer to that? Bandila, let me, let me just respond to the comments that you made about the ANC government. And let me put this question to you, if I may turn the tables for a second. If it is true that you support land redistribution so much, why won't you give title to the millions of people who live in state-sponsored houses and the millions of people who live on state-owned land in rural areas? Why will you not give them title? If you really support land reform, why? Is it, has it taken the DA to hand over hundreds of th thousands of title? Jordan, I think, I, think, I think what you keep distorting is that it's a lie that you now have begun to believe as the DA that we don't hand our title deeds to our people, which is not true. That's the one part. You are confusing. You no, you are confusing what is happening in traditionally held land by the kings, and you are confusing it with the ANC policy. And at the back of that confusion, you keep perpetuating that you are coming up with a better strategy that doesn't exist. What you are refusing to acknowledge and what you are refusing to run up with is the fact that in the province you govern, Western Cape, black people do not own any functional agricultural land, and you've not been able to change that. You then duplicate everything else that the ANC is doing. I mean, I mean the issue of handing out title deeds that you're talking about that you are now claiming to be doing, David Macquarie has already been doing that. It's a strategy that the ANC is going to be rolling across all provinces. That's an ANC vision. And, and, and this is characteristic of the DA's manifesto. It's either a copy and paste of the ANC, or it's a pie in the sky of actions that we actually cannot implement in the confines of the South African context and the financial limitations that we have. That's the problem. But Nungaba is now saying to you, you distorted the study with an email that you sent out. How do you answer to that? Well, I note, Bandile, that you have not answered my question on why the ANC refuses to give people title to the homes they live in. Mr. Makura has come late to the party, and we welcome his, uh, his arrival to the party now, but he goes where the DA leads. That's where he follows. Now, let me answer your caller from Cape Town and say, I did not say, we must be accurate with our words, I did not say that a million South Africans opposed land expropriation. I said 
There were nearly a million submissions to that committee, and the majority of those submissions opposed land expropriation without compensation. Now, it's all well and good to say now we've had this public participation process, but because we don't like the results, well, we're just going to toss it aside and write off those, uh, those public comments as some kind of conspiracy. But actually, that's not how public participation works. There was an open, free public participation process, and the majority of South Africans who participated in that process opposed land expropriation without compensation because they know, as well as every right-thinking South African knows, that it is a destructive policy and it is nothing more than an excuse for 25 years of failure. Jordan, let's, let's move on. We, we're clearly not going to agree on this land issue because you would want South Africans to continue paying for land that no. was stolen from them. Um, that aside, take South Africa to confidence um, with Give regard them title. to you. Take South Africa to confidence with regard to your pro poor um, concept that also speaks about equal opportunities for people with unequal background. How do you sell this pro poor debate while you speak about these equal opportunities for all South Africans. How can you pursue equal opportunities for South Africans without taking into cognizance the background that we're coming from, the legacy of this country that requires us to repudiate certain imbalances of the past? You are just saying everybody must imagine that we are now starting at the same starting line with equal backgrounds and equal skills and equal supports, but that's not the reality. Jordan? No, of course, Bandile, I think on there we may find some agreement. We, th that is absolutely not the reality. We are saying the huge majority of South Africans are still locked out of equal opportunity. They have terrible education, they have terrible health care, they grow up in real poverty. And that is where our absolute focus is. And the best way to deal with poverty in South Africa is through a DA government, because we have proven that we create jobs in large numbers, and that is the best way to get people on the ladder out of poverty is to get them into work. We improve education, we improve public health care, and so doing, over time, we improve people's opportunities and bring them up to the level of equal opportunity. We have never said that that is already the case. Our complete focus is on how to get people out of poverty, and we do it best. Okay, I've got, I've got, a, call for, I've got a caller from Durban, Jordan. Um, Vuyusi, good evening. Uh, good evening, Bandile and your guest. Go ahead. Um, thank you so much for having me in your, uh, in your program. Um, I just want to ask a question from the spokesperson of the, of the DA. Um, he talks uh, about advancing uh, the agenda of uh, the black majority, um, you know, in, when it comes to the land question. But I am not convinced because I have seen uh, many black leaders in the DA being patronized. So I don't think they are pro-black. Uh, it's just that towards the election, they will say something that would want to attract uh, black people to vote for them, but they have no mercy at all when it comes to the leadership of the... Of, of, there, there is no example from what we have seen in the leadership. Uh, black leaders in the DA, the examples are clear. Uh, there's Patricia DeLille. You know, there's uh, Ndoli, there's, uh, there's many of them that have not been advanced. I don't believe in the DA advancing the black uh, majority agenda. Thank you so much for, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mvyesi. Can we also take Keke from Bloemfontein? How are you? Good evening, Keke. Go ahead, my brother. Yes, um, the gentleman from the DA, I, he was talking about, he was asked about the BE alternative. But it seems like he's very evasive. He's not giving clear answers. Can you still answer that question because he's not I'm saying sorry, anything I've about lost it? The signal. Okay, um, Jordan, just coming back to you. I've lost um, the signal. Vuyusi from Durban raises a very critical question, and, and I want to contextualize it this way. Um, in in your executive, if you, Jordan, are you still with us? Jordan, are you still with us? Okay, we're going